I've been eating crustlings since before the FDA was a thing. Eat crustlings cranberry pork rinds and taste the authenticity. All right, hello everyone. We are here with Super Mega Baseball 4. I'm Mike Lowe, and boy, we have a lot to talk about in this video. I have been playing this game mostly offline, I guess exclusively offline, because we are on game 31 of 32, and I have yet to really stream much of this game other than uh, just kind of the introduction video that I did talking about when the game was announced and some of the details that came out around that. So. This is really the first video where we're going to be talking about my platypi team and the season thus far. And we have picked a really interesting time to get into things, which is why I wanted to start this video with exactly that, talking about where we are in the season. I'm going to be showing you guys some highlights of the 20 or so game, 30 games that we've played thus far. We're sitting at 16 and 14, and we'll be getting those highlights momentarily before getting into the actual game 31, which is a super important game. But I wanted to set this, uh, the stage, so to speak, for this particular game, because here we are in the epic division standings. The Platypi are in second place at 16 and 14 with a, a 19 run plus 19 run differential. And we're playing the Grapplers, who are right below us there, also at 16 and 14. And if you look at the wildcard standings, we have the Buzzards and Platypi and Grapplers all really, really close together. The Buzzards pretty much have it wrapped up with the first wildcard. And we are tied with the Grapplers for what would be the last wildcard spot available. So it's a super important game. What's interesting is it's actually the last game we just played too. So just the schedule makers did a pretty cool job of putting us uh, right up against the grapplers two games in a row. We were a game back of them. First time we've played them, I believe. And so we had the tiebreaker now. So this game is really important because we have the tiebreaker, but if we lose, the tiebreaker becomes, I guess, uh, you know, null and void but they would then be a game up because we have the same record. So even though we would have both won, they would have a better record and it would really come down to this last game against the Heaters, who are one of the first place teams in the division there, uh, in the Epic division uh, specifically, the Heaters are leading. So really both of these last two games are super, super important. We're gonna get into the game. We're gonna do a little bit of like pre-game for this one and really kind of hype up this game. And we'll be walking through really most of the game here in this video. Uh, but I wanted to first show you the highlights so far of our Platypi season. Again, we're 16 to 14. We're 30 games into this 32 game season. Let's take a look at some of the highlights and maybe even a few lowlights here of the Platypi season one.
So that's a little bit of how we got to where we are today, 30 games into the season. Hope you enjoyed that little highlight reel. Let's take a look at the team roster, and we did do a team draft to start this franchise, so the rosters were empty when we started. Most of these players are draft picks. There are only a handful of players that I have acquired or made moves for during the season. So you can assume that these were drafted players unless I indicate otherwise. So Roman Rhodes, our primary catcher, switch hitter. He's actually done really well. He's hitting over 300 for us. His age has started to set in a little bit, but overall has done a nice job. He's just acquired a wild thrower attribute to just happen randomly, uh, or the, the quirk, I guess you'd call it. Uh, so his age is starting to show a little bit there, but again, been very productive, especially at 5.5. We just signed Grizz Signoro. Um, he is basically just a, a backup catcher, defensive guy I wanted to get for the playoff run if we were able to make it, and it lowered some salary of a higher, played, higher paid player that we had on the roster who just wasn't getting any playing time. So that was to kind of bring some salary things down. Uh, Pomp Douchey, uh, literally Pomp Douchey is his name. He, a uh, younger player brought on, has been coming on a little bit stronger more recently. He's been getting more playing time. Rusty Bustum, decent player. Again, uh, we, we rotate a lot of guys kind of at first base between Pomp, Rusty, and a few others, but he's been a, a pretty decent player for us. Again, pretty young, 19 and 21, these two guys. So kind of picks for the future. Cheyenne Hill's been a really, really nice player for us. Has led the league in stolen bases, batting six, which is where I put my best base runner. Uh, typically, which I've talked about in other baseball videos as to why, Juice Jackson, one of our top picks, has been a really, really nice player uh, hitting in that two-hole spot for us, has had a nice season. Snag Roper brought in uh, probably around what would have been like a realistic trade deadline period, but um, he's he's been good. He's He's been a nice addition, is really, really good defensive shortstop. Not that Rob Glover wasn't, who is the player we drafted to be our shortstop, but Snag Roper, as you can see, really just adds a whole new dimension with his offensive game. And it gives us a little bit of time to develop Rob Glover in the background because Snag Roper is probably not going to be around very long at 38. So kind of a, a two, uh, two-headed two monster here at shortstop. Rory Crowd has been a nice player, really, really nice power bat. He's been batting in the five or seven spot a lot for us. I think he leads the team in home runs. So at 5.4 million at age 23, that's a nice thing to see is hopefully his contact can continue to develop. Jackie Slam's been a great player. It's been our cleanup hitter, mostly because of that RBI hero quirk, but only has the one home run, I think, on the season, but has been a really, really good hitter. Is in the top five, I think, for hits in the league, and probably somebody next year we're going to look to put maybe in that two spot or something like that. Matty Bat's mostly a bench player for us, but that pinch perfect trait is so powerful when you can bring in. I like to have a lefty pinch perfect and a righty pinch perfect and if you're curious what that is here's what it is it's plus 24 power and plus 24 contact and we have the full team chemistry and you can see that by the number of like silhouettes they have filled in we are up to that third tier so we're getting the full benefit of this and it's huge it is a huge huge quirk to have and i like to have a lefty and a righty although i think we did get rid of our righty uh, and replaced him with the catcher i was talking about so anyway maddie bats uh, as a bench player, Hera Owugliams is an original player from the Platypie. She was on my franchise before. She's our leadoff hitter, and I just absolutely love her game. Super, super good, but she is hurt, recovering from an injury right now, but is among the leaders in hits. Oakley Stiffs, another old player we brought in uh, just for the playoff run here, or the playoff push. And there's something I like about this game a lot is that they don't have a trade deadline. They don't even really have trades. You just sign and release players as you see fit. And what the teams will do is if a team's out of the playoff race, they'll cut a guy like Oakley Stiffs because they want to develop and use that time to work on a younger player for the next season. I'm in the other situation here where we're pushing for a playoff spot. So Oakley Stiffs has some value. We're going to kind of go the opposite route, maybe cut a developmental player, say like a 24-year-old 24 24-year-old who's just kind of like uh, not really getting a ton of playing time. And we can bring in Oakley Stiffs, who has mostly been filling in for the injured Hera O'Wugliams at right field. Then we get to our pitchers. We have a, really a two-headed monster here. Rotonda Black's probably going to be the league MVP. She's been awesome. Frago Belenstanos, I think is how you say his name. Another great pitcher. is probably going to be better than Rotonda Black at just 20 years old. But both these two are really cornerstones for this team. Super excited about that. We just signed Air Lovestone, which I'll talk about in a bit because I'm trying to decide who I'm gonna pitch in this very, very important game because it'll either be Air Lovestone or Candy Sweet, who was drafted by us. Candy Sweet has been very hot or cold 
Uh, it's, it's always a risk when we pitch her, so I'm a little worried with this pivotal game, but I'm still deciding between these two who we're going to go with here. Hold her close, a relief pitcher, but really has been in our starting rotation since day one. He will pitch the last game of the year. I wish I had done my rotation a little bit differently, where he was pitching this game coming up, but he's not fully rested. And then in the very first series, I wanted, or the first uh, round of pitchers, I wanted to keep him fresh in case we needed a second lefty, which we haven't really needed out of our bullpen. Rachel Rubard has been really good, throws super hard. She's been a really nice addition. And yeah, again, we're just, I really was hoping to use Candy Sweet actually out of the bullpen, but I forgot that you can't use starting pitchers there without a penalty. So again, Love Stone. Well, to see. This is a decision I'm going to have to make before the game here, what we're going to do, because if we don't use Lovestone, we can probably get rid of her, save that $10 million and just sign someone cheaper. So anyway, hold her close, has been in the rotation. This is a piece I would probably keep in the rotation, but usually around 80 pitchers or so, and he starts to be pretty gassed, so probably better served out of the bullpen. But we needed the starting pitching, and I love having three starting pitchers in that A- minus range is pretty great. Rubart, I mentioned, our lefty reliever has been really good. Farmhand has not been good, but again, Farmhand, 19 years old, just a developmental piece who's cheap. Munstar has been our primary righty out of the bullpen. We kind of use Rubar and Munstar as our top. And then Layla Buckberger actually leads the league in saves, has been pretty good. That rally stopper quirk is really, really nice. And again, it's maxed out where when she gets into some trouble, she's able to work out of it. So um, she's gotten some saves that have only been like an out or two. When say like the previous reliever gets into some trouble, we can bring her in and it's a really, really good matchup based on that quirk. So so that's a look at the roster there. Again, I got a couple moves I need to make here before we get into the game, but we'll do that here and then we'll be right back. Thanks to the magic of social media, you can now fax your long ball o chops competition pictures to at super mega pound sign radio dot com forward slash index dot php underscore end. We did make a final decision here on the roster, and that was releasing the starting pitcher that we just signed, Air Lovestone. And we're going to go with Candy Sweet in that final game pitching. You can see all of that information here in the middle of your screen. But Lovestone was released. And we brought on Doug Nerdword, who is the relief pitcher. I wanted to bring in a lefty, but unfortunately, there really wasn't anyone that would have kept our team chemistry where we had it, which has been really, really strong and, and a beneficial asset for our team this year. So Nerdword is a righty, but it at least gives us another bullpen option. We obviously didn't need an extra starting pitcher with just, just the two games left. And so it saves us a little bit of money. I also looked at potentially bringing on a different backup catcher. There was one available that had that pinch perfect trait, which is an awesome pinch hitting uh, perk you'd get on this team with our team chemistry. But again, it messed with too much of the other team chemistry to do so. So we did keep our uh, catching tandem in intact here with Grizz Signoro, who, as I mentioned, was one of the uh, most recent signings we had. Well, we're about to jump into the next game here and Real quick, just wanted to show you where our ego is sitting because I figured some may be curious as uh, what, I guess, sliders we're using in this game. But this is where I've kind of landed after 30 games. 60 hitting, 66 pitching, everything else left at default. Having said that, we're ready to jump in. This is a vital game as we talked about here with the standings. So Platypi Grapplers coming up, game number 31 of 32. Have the roster pretty much set here for what we're looking to do, but it's pretty standard. Even if you're kind of nicked up, this is a, a huge game. We need our, our best guys going here, and that's what we have. So uh, try to put some of these guys with the, uh, I guess, locked in trait or locked in whatever it's called. They're, they're the high fitness, basically. So they have the up arrow. That means they're going to perform a little bit above their standard uh, ratings. And of course, these lower guys, I tried to move down a little bit, but our top two hitters really have been so good for us, even if they are in a bit of a cold streak. So this has been pretty close to the lineup we've been using. And yeah, we're ready to go. So let's do it. And again, a rematch from the previous game, which we did win. We came back, we were down two nothing. Ended up winning that game. It might have been down three or four nothing. We ended up winning at five to three or five to four. You bet the 
that's a strike. Oh, that's inside. All right, off to a good start. Opposite field double there for Harold Wuggling. Number 19, Juice Jackson. Oh, one of the bummers of this game, the base running isn't always super smart, and if you don't catch it, that's what can happen. Just the one home run, but hitting 375. Ooh. That's going to be a double play. Nope. Should have just thrown the ball the second there. Number zero. Yeah, chased a bad pitch.
the batter, the second baseman, number 15, Cheyenne Hill. Number two, Oakley Steps. Designated hitter, number 27, Rusty Bustum. of Maki at Ground Roll Sushi, located on level two. Take my money, take it! Now better, the catcher, number 21, Roman Rhodes. Number 29, Hera O'Wuglia. So a Wuggly in two for two today. The third baseman, number 19, Juice Jackson. How about it? The shortstop, number 32, Snag Roper. Center field, number four, Jackie Slam. That's straight. Fans, unfortunately, we've had to cancel the mascot race today. The Spider Queen ate them all. Again. Number 42, Ryan Nickelford. 
counter. No. No. Oh, that's trouble. So two nothing grapplers. Not a great start, but that's how the game started in the previous game against these guys. Basement. Number zero, Palm Douche. Nope, that's low. Strike. Wow. Come on. How about it? The second baseman, number 50, Cheyenne Hill. Uh oh. Yeah, pitch out. Smart play. Two. Oh, clean steps. Now batting, designated hitter number twenty seven. Now pitching, rally, Obero. Interesting. So, a super quick pitching change. I've never seen one that quick. I wonder if he got hurt. I don't think they actually, I think that was intentional. Rally stopper, they're almost treating this like a playoff game. Makes a lot of sense to bring him in. Super good pitcher and a, a very, very early key moment here. I'm tempted to uh, pinch hit myself. I don't know, we'll take a look at it. And of course, what I'm looking at is this. Matty Bats being the lefty, really good matchup. Yeah, I think we're going to do that actually. We're going to do it right now. Kind of counter their move here. Batting, Maddie bats. Ball. That's a straight. Oh my gosh. Just missed that. Thought that was a home run. Number 21, Roman Rhodes. Oh, 
No, smart play by them. Gets out of an early jam. Set up for free flash Friday on the center field concourse. Our favorite team logo on you for life. No takes these back seats. Now batting the first baseman, number 46, Hercules Bentley. Fielder, number 29, Kara Owuglian. Yep, now batting, the third baseman, number 19, Juice Jackson. Shortstop, number 32, <coughs> Snag Roper. <laughs> on the trail with a grizzly on your tail? Devour the all-new Hungry Hungry Hiker Energy Bar and Bear Repellent. Hungry Hungry Hiker. Now your breath can scare the bear. Now batting the shortstop, number 21, Willard Wiggins. taxes with bogus docs creative bookkeeping and pseudo legal documents no one thinks outside the box like bogus docs how about it the center field number four jackie slam
batting. The first baseman, number zero, Hom Dushi. Strike. Now batting, the second baseman, number 15, Cheyenne Hill. Steps. Strike. <laughs> so that's going to play our first run. Luckily, I had the runner in motion there, so we can be. We won't even be close there at home. Two fastballs looking to steal it and just uh, it's over the plate, so put the ball in play. Oh, he's going to get to it. Candy Sweet has actually pitched pretty well for us, but I think it's going to be time to go to the bullpen. Even though she's locked in, even though her accuracy is way above where it usually is, I'm just kind of a believer in walking out of the casino while you're ahead, so to speak. And I think that's where we're at with Candy Sweet and the season she has had. Another reason is if we look at their lineup, we have Razzie Dazzler, righty coming up, switch hitter, which kind of a, is a wash. And then Perry Quaker, Hercules Bentley, both righty. So really, it's, this is probably a good time here in the sixth inning. They're going to at least have three more innings at bat, so this might be the last time we face the heart of the order, and there's no reason to uh, risk it by keeping a lefty in there who's really not a, a great pitcher at all for us. So I think we are going to go to the bullpen here, and if we do it now, the three-pitcher rule, um, it really gives us kind of, or the three-batter rule, it gives us four batters to work with before we're worried about Mario Mustachio, who is the lefty in their lineup, because then you'd think this next inning will probably be going to back to a lefty. So... All that said, we are going to go to our most reliable relief pitcher here, Ellen, Elaine Munstar, I believe is how you say her name. Going to make that switch a little early here. Elaine Munstar. That is trouble. That's a way gone. Well, the switch hitter was a wash, so I'm not overly concerned there with the strategy. But Harry Backman definitely took us deep there. And the grapplers get that run back. That was another pitch left up there. inning because then tip tapler yeah I think we will let Munstar pitch here now batting, a second baseman, number 
I don't think they bunt here with two outs. Jeez. Left it right over the plate. So Munstar comes in, not doing well. She had one job, she's not doing it. RBI hero, it's definitely time we go to the bullpen here for this matchup. Now pitching, Rachel Rubar. That's good, I wanted that pitch out of the zone. Just gonna set up pitch here. Do another set up pitch. Hey, all right. Set her up. Sure, trying to set up Wiggins for the change up there, but Whew, we couldn't afford that. We cut it to a one run lead, and now we're up to a three run lead. Three innings to go, though. Now batting the catcher, number 21, Roman Rhodes. That's time. Ball, that's inside. Third baseman, number 19, Juice Jackson. That's upside. Right. 
batting the shortstop number 32 snag Roper Strike. now batting the center fielder number four Jackie slam The first baseman, number zero, Um Dushi. No. Zerick. Yep, outside. Now batting the second baseman, number fifteen, Cheyenne Hell. The left fielder, number two, Oakley Steps. Now batting, the designated hitter, number 23, Maddie Bats. Number 21, Roman Rhodes. Now batting, the right fielder. Number 29, Hera Owagliam. Well, there we have it. Tough loss. Just really couldn't get the bats going. Clutch pitching wasn't great, but it, at the end of the day, it came down to the hitting. 
Had some opportunities earlier in the game, didn't capitalize, and this really puts our team in a tough spot with one game to go. We're gonna need some help to get that last wild card spot, and we'll have to see what happens. So taking a look at the wild card standings with one game to go, we actually still have a shot. We are a half game back of the grapplers. So we need to win, of course. And we're playing the heaters, so it's gonna be a tough game. They are plus 34 run differential, which is looks like the second best in all of baseball. It's gonna be a tough game. So we need to win that first and foremost. If we win that, we would also finish at 17 and 15, the same record as the grapplers. We won the first game we played, which was game 29, I'm sorry, game 30, and then they won game 31, which is the second time we played. So we are split head to head. So my guess is the tiebreaker maybe is the run differential, which we clearly have under, under wraps there. And if we win, of course, that wouldn't get any worse. So it, I think we still have a shot, but we have to win against the heaters. It's gonna be a tough matchup. We'll see what happens.